I'm going to do your formal intro, just so you know. So everybody, we're actually ready to get started. Today, I just want to quickly introduce you to uh, Casey Dunham. So Casey is a penetration tester for a now undisclosed at the moment, ask him later, uh, company. I say undisclosed because I really don't know exactly what the name of the company is. Uh, um, we we'll work for VSR. <laughs> OK, thank you. Uh, so Casey and I actually um, have been working together since about October of last year. He's actually my mentor, and so it's my great pleasure to uh, introduce you to Casey Dunham, penetration tester, application security connoisseur, and uh, mentor. Yes. We'll hear more from him later. Uh, what happened to my? I don't know why he's doing that. <laughs> yeah, there's a bunch of circles. Like. So anyways, uh, everyone, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to today's talk. Um, so, oh, come on. All right. Uh, Keith did a great job giving, uh, doing my intro. Um, I'm a senior security, cons security consultant with VSR, uh, which is also part of the NCC group. Uh, this is us last night. I'm around. Uh, I'm not really going to go into too much bio because I'm going to discuss some stuff about you know my life you know a little bit further on that I normally wouldn't get into in a normal presentation. Um, so one, you know, right off the back, like um, when we use the term mentor, like what are we actually talking about, right? And I want to discuss a lot of like this kind of term because um, in my talk and the, the relationship that Keith and I have is kind of a more formalized relationship than somebody who's just a friend. But mentor originally comes from uh, the Odyssey. And it was an actual name of the guy that uh, he was uh, Telemachus' teacher, and Telemachus was the son of Odysseus. And Odysseus went off to war, left him with mentor. And over time, the word mentor has evolved to mean a trusted advisor, friend, teacher, or wise person. And um, that's where it actually comes from. And I, was, I thought that was kind of interesting because I didn't know that. <clears throat> I'm not sure why it's not. Yeah, that's work. My keys aren't working either. Oh, that's, I'm sorry, hold on here. No, it's, uh, for a reason my internet keeps going out. No, it's, it's, not the, it's not the clicker. All right. All right, we'll use uh, the downloaded version. Um, so my inspiration for this talk is that throughout my life, um, I am essentially where I am today, not because of education, not because of you know, certain jobs or anything like that, um, but because of the people I've met who have encouraged me to do things. And some of these people have been, you know, in throughout my life, you know, for decades, if not longer. Some have been fleeting for maybe a year or two and we don't keep in contact anymore. But I've had a lot of them. And I want to, you know, essentially share my knowledge and experience and to solidify my own knowledge. And I think that it's a very valuable way of doing it is by helping other people learn and grow. So some of my highlights um, of being mentored is, you know, I, well, initially I never had any intention of going to college. Um, in high school, uh, I was a musician. I was playing a bunch of rock bands. Like, I'm going to be a drummer, like, plays in death metal and that stuff. And I was never, no intention of going to college, and I was going to go to Air Force and the Army. I've been actually through uh, the MEPS three times, and I never joined any branches of the military. And, uh, you know, I was kind of doing this, and I met a, a good friend of mine, and he really got me. He's like, hey, like, you should go to school. I was already doing a lot of programming. You know, I didn't really have any desire to do that. And he really convinced me that it was something I should do, and I did. And, you know, I thank him for that. Um, he also, uh, throughout the years, you know, got me my first professional programming gig, um, working uh, not with him, but, you know, in a similar area that he had. Um, I've had you know, mentors that uh, have helped me learn networking, like you know, the IT networking aspect where, you know, I, growing up, like, I didn't have a lot of computers to play with, and so the networking and operations kind of standpoint that a lot of people take for granted today, uh, I never really learned. You know, I still kind of lapse, uh, have quite a bit of lapse there, but I've been able to work with these uh, mentors and help, you know, teach me this stuff, which has been great. 
Uh, also getting into security itself. Um, I've been going to cons for a long time and I've actually turned down job offers for years from different security firms because none of them really fit what I wanted to do. And uh, the people I've met and networked with, you know, like uh, this guy here, Dave, um, what's up Dave? Uh, you know, we really kind of like got me into it and you know, that's how I got into security. And people are, you know, hey, how do you get into security? Break into it. Well, networking is a great thing. Um, but also understanding that meeting people is, is great and getting yourself out there and networking, but also like trying to figure out like, where are you even looking to go? And that can be a big question. Um, and you know, the only way to really figure that out is by meeting people doing the same job or getting out there and uh, finding somebody that can help guide that career path. Uh, and then, you know, also like just being able to push, you know, myself, like help having somebody guide and like, all right, like, you know, you're kind of flatlining, you need to push yourself a little bit more, just like a, you know, gym assistant or, you know, personal trainer. Um, so, in over the years, these people have become like some of my best friends. And I'm sorry about the slides, um, but so one of my, I decided to mentor is that, uh, you know, I've, I've done it throughout my jobs. You know, whether it's teaching somebody some programming language or helping guide them through developing some application or getting them up to speed on some security stuff. But uh, I met Keith and, you know, we had a brief meeting then he was kind of, hey, I'm looking for somebody to teach me some application security stuff. And I'm like, hey, I can do that. And it kind of just be started doing it. And we've been meeting weekly, if not more than that sometimes, for nine months now almost. And we've covered stuff from basic OWASP things all the way through some more, you know, projects and working through stuff. Um, but I think there is an, um, a lot of, of value in this methodology of apprenticeship, and you see it in a lot of other career paths. You know, doctors have their residency program, uh, there's professional engineers and novice engineers. Um, in order to get your PE certification, you have to work under a novice, um, a professional engineer for four years, and before you can take the test to get signed off on. And that's uh, a lot of like on the job training and kind of distilling that knowledge and experience from the professional engineer into the one, you know, coming up into that field. And there's a lot of stuff you now, even with all of our information security programs, there's a big aspect of it that's just not taught, right? Unless you're picking it up on the side and you know you're interested in it and you're going to go do that, uh, there's just a lot that you're not gonna learn in school. It, whether it's a SAN, you know, four year SANS degree or, you know, a, a college anywhere else that has an information security program. Um, and, you know, your, your Jedi and Padawan relationship. So what is mentoring? Um, you know, this is from Wikipedia. I had a pretty good idea that, um, that kind of aligns with like what I kind of view mentorship as. And you know, it's a relationship in which a more experienced and knowledgeable person uh, helps to guide a less experienced and knowledgeable person. That's essentially it. Um, but this also doesn't have to be, you know, technology based, right? Uh, my mentorship at Keith is very technology focused, um, but also I've, you know, helped other people like guide their career, like where you want to go. Like you don't want to do this or, you know, help kind of do that or even salary advice or like how do you, get through a technical interview or something like that. Um, I also view mentoring as leadership in action. Uh, some of the best managers I've ever worked for have been ones that, you know, I'm not just a person there to do a job and that's it, you know, that to be managed, but somebody that they want to help grow and be successful and provide the resources and tools for that to happen. And, you know, if you allow somebody to do that and allow them that, that air to breathe, you know, you'll see that you, you know, you can get some pretty successful uh, people out of that. And, you know, a part of that is if you're managing somebody or you're working with somebody, you want them to, you know, go beyond you. You want them to grow and to move on or, you know, take over or something like that. And, you know, when you, it's like raising kids. I don't know how many people have kids here, but, you know, my, his mom and I, ever since, you know, he was born, we've always been under, the, you know, the thing that we're not raising a child, we're raising a future adult. And so we've always treated him like that. And we want him to be successful and grow. Um, I also view the, the relationship between the mentor and the mentee or whatever you want to call it. You know, it's a professional relationship, and Keith and I, you know, even, you know, we've, we haven't quite gone that far, but, you know, it's like we have, like, this, you know, every week, you know, we're going to do this meeting, and we're going to be professional about it. Um, but, you know, I also have a lot of people, like, I'm friends with that I ask questions of, and, you know, like, that's great, like, that's the thing, but, you know, ours is kind of a more formalized thing, and we'll talk, you know, more about that on a few slides here. And uh, Keith had a great quote the other day, uh, mentorship is like two swords that sharpen one another. Um, and, uh, you know, because it is, like we've, he's helped me like learn a tremendous amount and I've helped him learn a lot and we're still doing it. And it's one of those, it's a great relationship from that perspective where, you know, even if you're an expert at it, you're still gonna learn stuff. So one thing is too is like, you know, 
like, if you're interested in mentoring somebody, it's like, you know, what, understand your motivations for doing this. Like, why do you want to do it? You know, um, do you, you know, figure out like what areas you're knowledgeable in, right? And it doesn't have to be like, oh, just I want to mentor you in like security or something. You know, you can pick, uh, pick a specific area. And also look at, you know, the time. Like, don't overcommit yourself because it's not fair to you or anyone else um, or the person you're mentoring to. Um, but it doesn't have to be long either, you know. I mean, Keith and I, like, meet an hour a week. But so, you know, to be a good mentor, like, one of the things is, like, you know, know your motivations, know your limits, patience, communication, and, and be vulnerable. You know, we critique each other all the time. Um, you know, Keith has helped me go over all, like, the workshop we did yesterday, all the slides, and, like, this is not, you know, I have more here. You know, and you need to be able to take those criticisms fine and, you know, open up about things. But, you know, patience, you know, if you're, you're just like anything else, you're teaching. Um, you know, it, it can be really frustrating sometimes. I taught college for a semester. Um, I've, I've done a lot of workshops and presentations, and it can be very difficult to teach somebody, so you gotta like kind of have patience, back off. Um, but know your limits too. It's like, you know, if, if you're overburdened or you like don't have time, don't do it. If you're getting the stuff that you just don't know a lot about, just say so, you know. So, you know, finding a mentee. Um, yeah, you know, the whole quote, like, when the teacher's ready, et cetera, like, you know, that type of thing. But also, you know, getting out there and networking. Um, you know, there's a lot of people around here. I know a lot of companies are hiring. There's a lot of people looking to get in the industry. And, you know, this is something where us veterans, you know, or people have been in, like, can help get these people started. Like, we do need more people in our industry. We also need to find the right places for them to go. And that's something that, you know, walking around and, you know, talking to people in tables is, is not really going to help you because everyone's trying to hire you or something. Um, Keith also has infosecmentors.net project. Um, it's, you know, you can sign up and you can say, I, I'm looking to be mentored in these subject areas or I'm looking to teach in these subject areas. And then it will match you with people that have the same things and it even has like a matchmaking thing. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Um, we'll talk a little about that. Uh, so, so practical, like, you know, we do all of our meetings of our Hangouts and we use Semaphore quite a bit because it was something I would want to try out from Spider Oak and it's just like a uh, kind of a, Slack kind of uh, private Slack channel type thing, but um, so we want to be set up for success. Uh, you know, meetings we try and have measurable goals. So we say, okay, like what is it we want to accomplish here, and we make sure like we time box our meetings. Okay, it's an hour. Like, see you next week. Let's go. Um, we try and have an agenda every meeting, and that might be just something we're going to discuss at one meeting. It might be something that we're discussing over the course of a month or two, and you know, try. <laughs> we fail at this, but try to take meeting notes. Um, it's helpful to refer back to, like, if a question comes up, like, don't derail everything, put it in the notes, come back to it later. Um, but, you know, every time, too, we schedule the next meeting. Ours are fairly recurring, but we've also had to adjust things as life happens. And there, you know, we, we use uh, Hangouts and Summer 4, like I said, mostly, but, I mean, there's a lot of ways to conduct these things. So the first meeting, <clears throat> um, one of the things that uh, Keith and I sat down for when we first started was uh, we just, the first meeting we just took and discussed, you know, what was going on and kind of get to know each other a little bit better and figure out like what he wanted to get out of it and what I wanted to get out of it. And we kind of like use that as, you know, our, our takeaways and like what we're going to do. Um, we've done some more formal like lesson plan type stuff where I've built like some applications or we did some walkthroughs of some different exploits, um, you know, introduce some tools, that type of thing. Um, but we also discussed like, all right, what is our schedule going to look like? You know, can we do a recurring one? And we just kind of got all those details out of the way. And then, you know, the desired outcomes. You know, what is it that we're trying to do here? So this could be an example where you have somebody who's trying to take, like, the OSCP exam and pass that. And it's like, if you have done that, you know, you can help somebody out. Like, all right, so our goal is to get you, you know, knowledgeable enough to pass the OSCP. And maybe you focus on that for a period of time, and then that's it. And that's the end of your, you know, little uh, mentor relationship or something like that. But, you know, it's, it's understanding, like, where you're going, you know, so that every meeting is not just, like, a rant, um, that you're actually getting something out of it. Subsequent meetings, um, you know, like I said, take and review notes because when you go back and you can review them, like we were talking about this, like did we want to revisit that or move on to something else? Uh, review all that previous work, discuss the next steps, look at your um, progress goals. Like if you do have a goal in mind, like passing the exam or the CSSP, maybe for somebody getting in the industry or something else, it's like, all right, where are you progressing on that level? And, you know, what do we need to do to make sure that you're going to be successful in that? Uh, the other thing is that, you know, Keith and I try and be very respectful of each other's times. So I think everyone should be. Um, I'm a big proponent of that. And we try and keep things time boxed and not, you know, drag things out or, you know, bother each other like all hours of night like I was doing with him like last week. <laughs> um, but, um, 
Yeah, so we have you know fairly communication channel, but, but you know, respect your uh, other people's time and don't overextend your you know both on both parties, right? Don't try and take too much of the other person's time. You don't expect like somebody else to spend like you know all week on something unless it's something that they're really interested in. So when it's time to end, you know things change. Uh, you know it could end. Hopefully it ends well. Your friends and move on. Um, you know I, I definitely have had you know a lot of that, but it doesn't always end that way. But you know maybe you reevaluate like okay like this has been great for you know this period of time, but now we need to step back. Like you know we're getting too busy. Things change. Not a big deal. But you know don't look at it as like oh I'm going to get you know irritated or something like that if my mentee like disappears or something like that. You know it is what it is. Um, but also, like, and I tell this everybody, like, try not to burn bridges because this is a small world, especially in infosec, and like, you know, you you want to leave a good impression, and that's on both parties too, right? Um, and I, I would hope that I wouldn't need to say that, but you, you know, I don't know. There's there's a lot of people out there, and you know, feelings get hurt sometimes. So <laughs> collateral dam uh, damage or developments from the stuff that we're working on uh, from both of us, um, and so if. Keith, you know, Keith wants to come up here and we can uh, talk about some of the stuff. Um, what, <clears throat> excuse me. So, um, this is a little loud, sorry. So one of the things I did before this meeting is I told Casey, because he was panicking a little bit, building his being mean class and then preparing the slide deck, I said, well, we're both gonna be at this thing. If you need someone to pitch in to help you fill some time, um, I'm happy to maybe do a bit of a Q&A and, and talk a little bit about some of the projects that we've worked on. So. Um, Casey, would you rather start with talking about maybe projects or maybe ask the questions first and then come back and kind of wrap up Let's with talk about them. some of the projects, because um, I, I think that's, uh, we just do that. Um, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm gonna stop messing with this. So um, one of the things that I, I just wanted to mention is part of the reason, is this me? One of the reasons that we even started this mentorship is last year I started working on the InfoSec Mentors Project or the relaunch of the InfoSec Mentors Project. And for me, it was a situation where I knew that there were a lot of people starting out in the industry that needed mentorship. There were people that were interested in providing mentorship. And I wanted to look for a way to bring those people together. I was learning Flask. I was learning web application security. It was a big driver behind that. And uh, so I reached out on, on Twitter because I needed help. I mean, admittedly, I couldn't build this thing all by myself. So reached out and Casey said, yeah, do you, if you need a mentor, sure, why not? Um, and as you'll see as part of the code commits on InfoSec Mentors, Casey did a really good job helping to set up like a, a test bed environment for Vagrant, um, gave me a lot of feedback on a regular basis as to how to get that up and running. Uh, and as a result of that, uh, as of just a few days ago, we have over 300 people registered on the site. We have something like a 33% uh, mentor to mentee matched ratio. So basically you sign up, three skills that you could potentially teach someone, three skills that you'd like to learn. Then you're basically signed up, hit suggest, it'll match you with someone that meets the skills that you wanna learn, and then you can connect with them. And if they agree to connect, then you've got a mentorship set up right there. Uh, so it sets really great expectations and Casey did a really good job helping me get that launched. So that was a collaborative effort that came out as a result of my mentorship or Casey's mentorship of me. Um, I'm sure that I probably bothered you way too much with that, but feel free to jump in and add some thoughts. No, I mean, it, it was pretty cool, because like, uh, it actually, he extended a project that was picked up from uh, some other people in the industry that kind of languished, and he re-resurrected that, and I didn't even really touch any code on it. I don't think I did at all, did I? No. It was fully developed by him and everything like that, but I just kind of guided, like, all right, like, this is, you know, works great, this is cool, like, you know, maybe you should change this or that, um, just based on my development you know, background and experience. Um, but I you know, definitely recommend checking it out. Uh, the other thing that came with this is, uh, and you know, something that I got out of it was, I think December, November, maybe. Um, you know, we were going through some uh, AppSec vulnerability stuff, and you know, looking at okay, like some XSS and SQL injection type things. And he come, he he brought up, he's like, hey, like, do you know anything about the mean stack? I'm like, I, I, what is the mean stack? <laughs> um, and it was something, oh, like the Node.js stack and all that stuff. And it was something that I've been interested in uh, kind of learning about and getting into for a while and just haven't really made it a priority. And then, so he brought it up because we were discussing bug bounty programs. And a lot of the bug bounty, uh, a lot of the applications that you know, are on these bug bounty programs like HackerOne or BugCrowd, a lot of them are more and more making use of either various components of the stack or the entire stack itself. And we're like, hey, this is, you should get into this. So we both bought um, a book called, uh, you know, Developing in the Mean, or. It was, uh, yeah, it was Getting Mean. Getting Mean. And it was funny, because one night we were talking about it, I had, I had started reading the book, and I bought it on Amazon, and suggested, I was like, this, I, I'm reading this because I felt like it was worth learning to attack that framework. 
Uh, and then, so we're talking and I said, wouldn't it be great, Casey, if we actually did something like being mean, like, you know, being that mean person and attacking that web stack. And so um, little did I know, actually, Casey kind of started working on this project as an idea, a concept, put a CFP forward, got accepted here to B-Sides Boston. I was like, oh, hey, wait, I know the guy that wrote that. <laughs> uh, and, and then we actually worked on it together. So we, we really kind of spent like the last couple of months or whatever, like learning the mean stack. We built some applications together and just kind of, you know, worked on you know, various parts of it and applying my vulnerability knowledge and assessment knowledge into what we were doing, like, all right, like, how is this exploited? Um, you know, I've, I've done some AngularJS exploitation in the past, but it was like, all right, we got this other stack, the Node.js thing. And so, you know, this kind of started coming together and it was like, you know, we both ran this workshop yesterday and it was pretty good. We had like, what, 40 people there, 35? Something like that, yeah. And it, what was awesome about it, too, is as part of this, um, my interest in, in kind of the, the student side of really learning something has driven Casey's development of knowledge from attacking that web stack. And so in a way, it's like he goes out and he's learning it, and then I'm also learning the attack portions from Casey while also learning the building portions on my side as well. Uh, and, and as a result of that, I think that, like yesterday, I, I saw one of the students came up with the idea of how to do some of the more automated cross-site scripting, and I was like, oh, exactly. Like, I know how that would work from the templating engine side, because I learned right. a lot of that. Um, and it's, that's been an awesome effort in terms of building that out. I think that we're looking at building it into a, actually a longer class. I've convinced Casey, or I think I've convinced Casey, to turn it into a plural site course just because it's a stack that you don't see a lot of security knowledge in. Yeah, and, and it might, I might do the, the thing yesterday, like on a, do like a free like webinar or WebEx or whatever, because I know a lot of people are hitting me up about it. And like, I mean, it's, it's fair, like the information is out there for the most part. There's a lot more research to do like that. Um, you know, there's some stuff like, especially on the MongoDB injection type, uh, uh, the NoSQL injection that like, not a lot of information on actual exploitation is out there. Um, and some of those can be really difficult or weird to exploit, but so that's something we'll probably be working on too. You know, all, we also had this idea for this talk too, is like, well, might as well like, you know, do this talk on it. Um, we've also got this other project coming up called, well, his, his kind of brainchild I'm gonna help him with, uh, attackdriven.io, so if you wanna talk about that. Yeah, yeah, so um, one of the things that came about as a result of actually building the Being Mean workshop is, is I realized as I'm learning a lot of different languages that I'm not practicing my web application security skills while I'm learning to develop Java. And so as you start to kind of focus in one area, the other area gets rusty. And then if I go back and forth, it was a problem of, I'm getting rusty either way, so why not just kind of integrate it all into one workflow? Learn how to build vulnerable applications, learn how to use the tool sets, techniques, and practices to actually attack the vulnerable applications, and go back and kind of take those developer half measures of fixing things, so you eventually learn what bad code looks like, how to attack it and test it, and then eventually what good code should look like at the end of that result. And Casey, being a little bit more knowledgeable on the attack side, is helping me out and kind of focusing in on building the attacks, and I'm focusing on how to learn to develop at the same time. So it's like a collaborative effort of quickly cycling through the learning process, learning all of the tools that are involved from the development through the attack chain and back. And the other thing that uh, on the, the attack driven side, the attack driven.io side here is like making, you know, all the time as an AppSec consultant, you know, especially when I do developer trainings, you always ask like, okay, well, what tools or stuff out there? And, Honestly, it's like, well, not really many that, um, you know, but also a lot of these things like, you know, doing static analysis on JavaScript is extremely difficult. Um, you know, there's only like uh, one or two tools that really support it even or, you know, do anywhere near like a decent job at all. And um, it's kind of developing a resource like, okay, like we're developing a stack, like what tools are out there like that are usable and from like a DevOps standpoint or really kind of fit that development pattern. So like, you know, if it's like a IDE plugin or something like that, like, you know, evaluate like how, how good is this? How does it work, right? And actually building a kind of a resource out there where you can kind of direct people to. And we have a lot more, you know, stuff that we've been tossing around too. And, you know, I'm not, I don't think we're, we're essentially trying to say like, look, the, you know, we're just trying to say like, this is the stuff we've done that's been a direct result of, you know, even kind of talking, getting in a relationship like this. And I, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there that can be done and, you know, if, you know, you have somebody that's interested, like maybe you can get together, combine your forces, and like, you know, go off and do projects. Um, it's been very, like, successful from that standpoint. I've actually got a series of questions that I, I've set up as well, so. Um, I don't know what any of these are either, so. <laughs> so I haven't actually shared these questions with Casey, and I, I thought it would be a good opportunity, being that we're both here at this conference, to get a little bit of, like, um, the mentorship view and, and kind of make this also a dialogue. So for those of you that are, like, seeking mentorship, maybe having Casey ask some questions of me as to, 
you know, from the mentee perspective, like what should you do to prepare yourself to be a collaborative part of this? As you can see, like a lot of the, the work that's come out of this mentorship has been very fruitful for both of us. I mean, Casey's here talking today, he was training yesterday, um, and we've both learned a great deal as a result of this mentorship. It's not just a one-way street. Um, so the first question I had, and I think this is important for those people that are newer to the industry, is if a person is very new to the industry, do you think it's appropriate for them to get a mentor right away or should that person try to learn the skills themselves before they actually seek out a mentorship? I, I think that um, to, to be really successful at that, uh, the person should kind of see where they enjoy spending their time and if they, you know, like try things and figure that out because otherwise, like, you, I, I, my, my take is like you'd want to find like a specific, like we focus more on AppSec, you know, if you were like, hey, I want to use some more network security, like, I, I mean, like, I don't really, that's not my gig, you know, I mean, we could play and, like, learn it. But, I mean, I think that uh, it, it shouldn't be something that you go out and seek out. And, I mean, that's kind of creepy, too. Like, <laughs> like we'd be my mentor. Um, so, I mean, I think, it, I think it naturally will come about. And I, I think that just getting in and, and kind of taking in, going to conferences, like, you know, either uh, OWASP meetups or chapter meetings or, you know, B-Size Boston or some of the regional ones where you can meet people in your area, I think it's a great uh, way of doing that. And so I think that, you know, when it, it'll happen naturally, but I don't think that you should be out there like looking for like find somebody to mentor. I, mean, I think you might want to find some people you can talk to about career choices, but you know. That's fair. Yeah. So more or less then, just kind of a summarize that your idea is a person should know what they want to learn before they engage a mentor. Is that fair? Yeah, I think so. Um, so another question is a follow up to that as well. So for the, those people that want to figure out what they want to learn, um, are there any resources that you recommend to those that are newer to the industry to explore or kind of feel out those areas? Um, I mean, everyone's you know, essentially going to start with OWASP, but my suggestion is like, don't stop there. I mean, OWASP is kind of a great like, starting point, but I mean, there's a lot of stuff it doesn't cover, and there's a lot of other things that you should you know, also be looking and just, just doing your own research, digging in, and uh, just take something and focus on it for a little while and like, just dig in and see what you can learn about it. Awesome. I mean, as well for my side, when I was figuring out kind of what I like to learn, um, I used Cybrary.it to go through a lot of the free education courses. Just to, I've never used any of those, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah. For me, it was like I didn't know where to start, so that's kind of where I started to figure that out. And then I met Casey, and I definitely wanted to do AppSec, so it fit perfectly. Yeah, and, and a lot of the regional conferences, like besides Boston, or if you're somewhere else, they always do like workshops or something. They're usually pretty cheap. Like I think mine was like thirty-five bucks. Yeah, I think it was like, yeah, right around there, so, I mean, less like, than 50 for sure. Yeah, I mean, for like, you know, so I, I'd like to think that there's a lot of good information in there and, and people learn a lot, but it also gives an opportunity, like, you know, for essentially, you know, almost no cost of free to just try something out and see if you're into it or like it or not. So uh, my next question is, as a mentor, how important is it that your apprentice comes prepared for meetings? <laughs> Pretty important. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, you know, you're taking somebody's time. And I, I try and be as prepared as I can be and be on time um, because like, I'm one of those people that will show up 10 minutes early to a meeting. And I don't like being kept waiting, especially if it's somebody else's meeting. And to me, that's just a sign of respect. And I think that like, having knowledge, that's why I think, you know, hey, we're ending a meeting. What are we going to discuss next week or what do we want to work on? Because if we want to like, go over, like, hey, can you work through some blind SQL injection with me? Like, as if I'm mentoring him and that, I need to make sure I have something ready to go, because it's kind of hard to teach if you're just talking about it. You need to actually do it. And so I need to you know, do my part to make sure I have an app or something that we can demo and, and use together. And then also, you know, it's really hard to teach blind SQL injection if somebody just shows up and they don't know what SQL injection is. Uh, so it's like being prepared and like understanding like what's going on. And we've been, I think, I think we've done a pretty good job of that. Um, I don't think there's really been any times, unless we're, there, you know, a few times we're both busy and traveling around. But uh, so I think it's gone pretty well from that perspective. And I, I know as well, too, there have been times where it's been kind of like a last minute, but we've had to cancel for, uh, you know, on each other for different reasons. Um, and, and I think that being respectful of each other's time by making sure they don't show up and then you never show up without letting them know what's going on, I, um, that's never happened to us, which is okay. good. Right. Uh, I mean, not that I can remember. I think there was maybe one time where it was like, hey, Casey, you're coming on. You're like, oh, crap, yeah, I'll be there in a few minutes. But yeah. that's happened to me at the same time, too. I was uh, so. Um, out of curiosity, and this is more for maybe my own knowledge, can you tell when your apprentice hasn't prepared? It, yeah, it depends on what we're working on. You know, <laughs> I mean, like, so a big chunk of our time has just been this workshop, you know, and, and I think that, you know, we've been working on that all, I don't know about you, but I've been working on that workshop and various stuff coming out of that workshop, like, ongoing for months now. I mean, I kind of redesigned it. I, for some reason, like, I was told that it was only going to be a five-hour workshop, and I was like, yeah, it's like an entire day. 
all of a sudden like, oh crap, like I need to redo this. And like, I kind of took a step back and redid uh, what I was thinking about. And so, but maybe even like researching and, you know, uh, just digging into a lot of this stuff for a while. Um, so our meetings are normally like just discussing what we've done, like what we're going to be doing next on it and, you know, getting his uh, feedback on what I've done. Like, do you think this is enough? Do you think this is good enough? You know, what, you know, what can we do different or what can we add to this to make it different? So having that feedback or working with somebody ongoing like that has been really tremendous and help, helping build that and, you know, is successful because of that. And I, I think as well as part of like if you, if you start to think about, okay, what can I offer to my mentor as, as feedback? I think what's been really well for us is I've been able to tell you, even on like slide decks, so you know, this talk or, or the Being Mean talk is, as a new person, this is what I need from this slide deck. And that's, I think, pretty beneficial from like the other side. It's like you, you might not think you have something to offer, but you do, which is that perspective of being new to the industry. You have an opportunity to provide that feedback so that the person who's working on you know, a talk or uh, a training can get that perspective. And that's hopefully pretty useful. Yeah, totally is. Um, so, out of curiosity, how much time do you spend preparing for meetings with your apprentice? Uh, I, I spent, in various weeks, I spent a lot of time, actually. Um, so, when I, I've, I've developed, so I've done a lot of developer training, and I've taught people various specific things, and, uh, you know, I, I built a lot of, like, kind of toy applications, but there was, like, one week, I think it was at SQL Injection, or the, I think it was that one, where I spent a lot of time, like, building out, like, a little test bed, you know, because, like, I tried using some of the ones that are out there. I don't like using off-the-shelf apps for like any trainings I do because I feel it's a little like cheating. Um, you know, they're, they're out there, you can go use them whenever you want to, but like when I do workshops where I would try and make it specific to the workshop and that way also I know it in and out so I can be very like aware of like what's going on with it. So I've, I've actually spent a lot of time like building up these things, like, you know, doing them. Um, you know, with a larger purpose too is that it's helped me control my training so that all this feeds back into everything else I do. And um, so I, yeah, some weeks none, but some weeks, you know, a few hours, more than a few hours. Admittedly, I think he actually finished reading the book that I didn't get a chance to finish <laughs> um, for the Being Mean training. So I, did. I could tell just how much Casey was putting in a lot of effort, and I learned on the fly, thankfully, but I, I definitely yeah. picked up things along the way, which I, was good. I, yeah, because like, when we started working on this, like, I built like three different mean apps, like just really small things to try out stuff, and like he was like, I'm on like chapter four. <laughs> I'm like, dude. I was a little bit slower, admittedly, <laughs> but uh, thankfully I, I, I worked well on the fly, and I think the code commits came Yeah, no, that was with a broken finger and having a flu for like three weeks straight. So sometimes <laughs> being a mentee, part of your role is to make sure that your mentor is doing okay, <laughs> checking in on their health, supporting them any way they can. I think at one point I was like, if you need someone to type up your stuff for this class, I will do it, <laughs> um, which was pretty awesome. And, and in the end, it came out really well. Um, so. We've talked a little bit about what you do to prepare for meetings, but out of curiosity, how effective have you found it uh, working on projects together? Uh, to, to me, it's been one of the, uh, the highlights of, of this entire thing because it's something I've come out of it, um, the workshop, and it's, it's been great. And honestly, like, I probably would never have done that if I, we hadn't discussed it and like, like, hey, you should do this. And also, like, you know, he's still pushing me to do, like, hey, you should turn this into a plural site course. And, you know, like, because I've taken, like, all the Troy Hunt stuff, I've gone through all of that, and, and other things, I'm like, yeah, this is, like, really basic, and it's, there's not much out there for, like, some really specific AppSec stuff. And so we're discussing, like, you know, doing more trainings, like, figuring out more stuff we can do that, you know, somebody who is an application security consultant now to expand their skills could take, but also somebody's coming into application security from, like, network, a networking background or something else that they'll have resources to, to take, too, that would be something I'd want to sit down for, you know? Um, so, so like to me, like I love having these little goals where, hey, we're going to do this and work on this project together, and this is the outcome for that project, and like that's been awesome. Thank you. So, at, out of curiosity, uh, what's been your favorite project so far? Or, and then second or follow up to that is, what are you most looking forward to from some of the work that we're going forward on? I, I think the being mean stuff um, was my favorite so far because it's been like. That, that's something that's really benefited me a lot. Um, I, I'm more familiar with MongoDB now. I know how to test for you know, various injections. I know how to you know, somewhat exploit those. And you know, especially on the, the uh, templating engine side or server-side JavaScript injection. Like I'd never written a reverse shell in JavaScript before. So like, you know, I learned how to do that, and that was a lot of fun. Um, I'm really looking forward to the attack-driven stuff. Um, there, there, is, there is a potential book that I'm going to be writing as well, so he's going to be my de facto editor on that, I think. Um, I don't know if that's ever going to happen, but I mean, I think right now my, my the attack, working on the attack driven stuff would be kind of fun. And that, again, another benefit of being a mentee is you can harass them about what they say they're going to do uh, and then kind of hold them accountable. Exactly. So, and at the same time as well, like uh, you can be, as, as Casey pointed out, you know, 
be vulnerable to one another. So I've had Casey be a critic of some of my work, which has been good because he's got offered really good um, feedback for some of the projects that I've. What was the What was the quote you said yesterday in the workshop that was I was a. Uh... Oh, uh, you're an opinionated framework. <laughs> um, yeah, I am. <laughs> so, uh, out of curiosity as well, um, what skills have you developed as a mentor, as a result of being a mentor, or what have you found that maybe you, you were surprised about in terms of the skills you've developed? Um, I, I think that I don't know about skills developed, but it's, it's been kind of, a, in some ways, a reaffirmation. Even though I do this stuff professionally, and like I find stuff for clients all the time, and or you know, hopefully I do. The, but it's also like, hey, like, you know what, like, I actually do have stuff to share. Um, and it's not just technical details, it's, it's knowledge and experience. And that being reaffirmed, like, hey, like, this is directly benefiting you, um, I think is awesome. Um, and that also helps me, because like, I am just like everyone else in this industry, you know, I, I don't know anyone that doesn't suffer from like, the imposter syndrome, right, where you just don't think you're good enough. You know, it's like, ah, what am I doing? Like, I, I'm not going to give a talk. I'm just, you know, not good enough to do it. It's like, yeah, you are. I mean, look at mine. Um, <laughs> so it, it's like, you know, getting over that and it's that reassurance, like, hey, like, this is valuable. You know, I do have valuable knowledge and experience to share and, you know, I enjoy sharing it, so. And what's been really good as well is um, I've never given a talk before at a conference and so what's been nice is working with Casey to put together CFPs for other talks that I propose and having his critical feedback and thoughts uh, on that. So I think that, you know, it's kind of a two-way street in that side as well. Because you, you submitted to DerbyCon for the... Attack and besides Las Vegas okay. for attack-driven development, so um, hopefully... Fingers crossed, I'll get a chance to do those, and that would be pretty awesome. Um, so, also, I, I just curious, or you know, after all this time that we've worked together, what motivates you to keep going? Um, fear of failure. Okay. Okay. I mean, you know, like Gary Vaynerchuk says, I mean, you die tomorrow, right? Like, just keep going. Like, you have to do something. And I, you know, I want to progress my own skills and career, and this has been a way that I can help keep myself on that path, right? Just, you know, keep going. Nice. Uh, so lastly, in your eyes, what separates a good mentorship from a great one? Um, when you look back on it like a year later and you have specific things like, I couldn't have done this without this relationship or I probably wouldn't have, you know, like, I mean, because that the whole point of this is to grow your own knowledge and experience, and if you're not looking back on that, and you know, if you've picked up a few things, great, but you know, it, it's some of mine have led me to entire career changes, right? Like, and so I mean, I think that's uh, some of the greatest ones. And I mean, we've done this stuff in what eight months? Not even eight months, yeah. like four, really. And we still, you know, we've got the next year almost planned out of, of more things that we're doing. So it's like to me, this has been a great one. We've got actionable items. We've got stuff coming out of it. And it would have been great too. I would have been enjoyed it, just you know, teaching him SQL injection or cross-site scripting, you know. But like that's you could you know learn that from almost anyone. And I, so I think this has been a great aspect from like the stuff we've been able to do and the stuff that we want to do. So I know that for sure. If I ever get my CFP accepted, I'll be bugging the hell out of him to actually make <laughs> sure my talk gets uh, is, is good and presentable. But that's all the questions that I had for this point. Thank you very much, Sorry. Casey, for answering them. And uh, I'll let you finish your talk. Yeah. Um, does anyone else have any questions? Um, we're pretty much going to wrap up. So if anyone has any feedback, questions, thoughts, um, oh yeah, or any, any anything, yeah. So you guys met a while ago. Um, At a bar. At a bar, actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How how did how did you guys come together initially? I have no idea. So um, where were we was, in that bar was, for? Uh, there was a Red Hook Red Hook Brewery up in Portsmouth. Uh, there was a get together that. Um, so it wasn't Bob Rudis, it was Bill Pelletier, um, and a few other people were getting together in the area, and they just wanted to kind of meet up and, and grab beers. So I decided to go because I knew a few people. I saw it on Twitter. I kind of invited myself. Casey was invited. A few other folks that we know here were invited. And um, I was, at the time, not at, I'm at Rapid7 currently, uh, but I wasn't there at the time. And so we, we got talking, and we discussed I was working on this mentorship project at the time. It was still kind of a pie-in-the-sky idea. Uh, and Casey had mentioned that he was really interested in, in helping out and pitching in. And it was probably about a, a few weeks to a month later, I finally kind of put out on Twitter that I'm looking for a mentor because I kind of hit a wall. I needed some help. Uh, Casey reached out and said, cool, how can I help? And we just kind of took it off from yeah. there. And that's a great point because like, uh, I know a lot of people in the industry, and it, it, as I'm sure all you do, and, and I think that overall this industry has been one where if you have questions or you need help with something, people are more than willing to help you out. You know, um, I've had some great conversations with people like, hey, let's just jump on a phone for an hour 
you know, discuss this and, you know, this, oh, okay, like, you know, people that are making a lot of money or, like, really busy and successful, they're taking, like, an hour of their day to, like, you know, phone some dude in, like, Maine to, like, have a conversation with them. Um, so, I, mean, I think that's, like, this industry overall has been awesome from that perspective. Um, so, don't be afraid to, like, ask people stuff. You know, yeah. go out there and, like, ask for help and, you know, it, it doesn't matter how famous they are, you know. Um, like even Dave Kennedy, he's like on these news channels, stuff like that. Like I've hit him up offline a few times for questions and he's always been like right there helping. And I've seen the same thing. I mean, even building the InfoSec Mentors Project, I mean, Casey has been a, a main contributor to my knowledge that has helped build that. But I've reached out to folks like Apollo Clark, yep. Jack Daniel, um, and I have almost always found that w when someone has time to actually interact with you, they are actually more than willing to help. Um, and so it's, there's usually that hesitancy, that kind of concern, which is part of why I brought you know, InfoSec Mentors into being was, here's people that are understanding that they are willing to provide some sort of guidance and there are people that want to learn. And that, that actually led to him being on Security Weekly too. Uh, yeah, that, that was podcast. back on March 9th. We, we, should so. put that, we forgot about that one. Um, we've done so much, we can't remember it all. <laughs> Any more? Great question though, thank you. I mean, it, some, I don't want to say no. Um, I am also uh, getting into a process where I'm mentoring a, a good friend of mine who I've known for years. She lives in California, um, but she's trying to get out of like a more infosec policy type role into something more technical. And I've been helping her and she's like, yeah, you know, until we start talking, she had never like exploited a SQL injection. You know, so I mean like that's a pretty wide skill gap, right? And I, I get value out of that too, because that, that only, I mean, all these things add up. Like every time I explain a SQL injection and cross-site scripting, it, even if it's like a basic, like you know, OWASP 101 type thing, it always adds to my ability to you know explain it further. And sometimes stepping back into that really basic thing, like, is great, you know. And I, I like doing that sometimes because it does help me kind of baseline, like, all right, like, what am I even doing? Because you can get really lost in those that forest pretty quickly. And, and I've also found too, so with my apprentice or my protege, um, she's actually coming from a role where she was policy based similar and she wants to go toward penetration testing. And I think that one of the benefits of kind of sharing that knowledge is um, it doesn't necessarily have to be that you're sharing direct knowledge as Casey has with me for sometimes it's like, these are the resources that I've used that have helped me. Um, like, and she'll come back and ask questions about different things. And it's just more of being like a guide. Like these are the points on the map that you want to make sure you touch upon to actually be successful. And, and so, that relationship is a bit different than Casey and ours because that's more of like via email. We actually just kind of will tweet at each other back and forth or, or we'll write e emails to each other to kind of give that guidance. If it was a more um, like regularly paced type role, I think that having that, that closer parity or at least having someone that is willing to do the work to learn those things is good, but I don't think that necessarily having a, a you know, vast gap in skills is a bad thing. Um, sometimes it's great because it'll remind you of things that you may have forgotten. <coughs> But also, I mean, you have to, you know, it's one of those things like when, you know, I'm teaching, you know, I taught my programming class, you know, I had some people that are really good at it, and also some people are like, what, what, what is programming? <laughs> you know, so it can be kind of difficult, but, you know, there's value in that too. And um, so, I, I mean, I, like, yeah, I, I, I think it depends on what you want to get out of it, you know, honestly. And if, it, if, if you're trying to, like, really kind of build your own skills up, then, you know, finding somebody that is more closer, you know, because he's already in security, just a different aspect of it, right? Um, so it's a little bit different than trying to, help somebody in college or, you know, even younger, like, getting into just security as a whole, right? Um, and I remember, like, when I was, like, younger, like, when I was, like, 12, I used to go to, like, 2,600 meetings in Minneapolis, and, like, my older friend who could drive, like, we'd drive in and, you know, run away from home, and, like, we'd go to 2,600 meetings, and I learned a lot from people there, just, like, you know, where to go next, you know, built my first blue box with them, and, you know, a lot of fun stuff. Um, so you can definitely learn from both sides of that. It's a long way to rant, but. There's, yeah. Uh, two questions. Uh, do you have any recommendations as far as like either uh, four-year university college students or community college students for resources and finding out what they might want to be interested in about security? I mean, resources like. I, I, I guess I should ask like, um, are, yeah. is it more of like exploratory resources? So like not really sure where I want to go or what I want to do? Or is it more like um, these are the books to pick up for this field versus this field versus the other field. So 
I think one of my general feedback for just about anybody, um, and I, I know a few people that have really benefited from this, is if to do well in this industry in general, even if you're not necessarily um, someone that does you know, penetration testing, learning to code at some level, even if it's a very basic level, is incredibly valuable. I mean, I know uh, one, one of our friends here, Audie, um, she didn't know Python. She was doing a project that would have required her to be up at like all hours of the night due to the change controls that she was tied to. She took two hours to learn Python and wrote a script and was able to take a multi-day process down to a matter of hours that was all automated. Um, and and I, I mean, honestly, from that knowledge, you can gain so much more in this industry as a whole. Yeah, I, I definitely concur with that. Like uh, as a uh, you know, a penetration tester that focused more on application security. There have been times where my ability to code has led to me to actually able to uh, exploit something that otherwise wouldn't have been there or even to find it. So, I, I, yeah, very valuable. And, you know, I would expect anyone kind of coming in. If I was hire, as a hiring manager and you know, I was looking for some app sec people, um, even on the network side, I expect them to be at least be able to code a little bit um, enough to, you know, make some HTTP requests and modify them, you know. I mean, Stuff like that. I mean, it doesn't have to be uh, building entire like web applications, but that also, I mean, has a great, you know, uh, uh, has a, a lot to teach you about security as well. Um, you know, it's just like you can't really secure a network unless you know how to build networks. But uh, I, as far as like, I mean, exploratory research is. I, I don't know if there's anything that out there like if somebody's like, all right, I don't know if I'm going to be a pen tester. I, I, I guess it's like kind of looking in and, and meeting people that are doing that work and like getting kind of low down from them. And yeah. there is a cybrary.it, so C-Y-B-R-A-R-Y.it, has, it's all free content. And they have, you know, multi-hour training courses to cover anything from your A+, plus all the way through, like, your network plus, through your, uh, I think they have some stuff now on CEH, so Certified Ethical Hacker. Um, if a person is just like, I don't know where I want to go and what I want to do, um, but I'd like to get into the security space, Going in and exploring those and finding what they, f they think is interesting, grabbing books. I mean, there is an ungodly number of books. No Search Press is like another place that I, my bookshelf is almost all No Search Press books um, in security that I've, I've purchased quite a lot. And there's a lot of, I mean, there's AppSec, there's penetration testing, which is maybe not tr fully AppSec. There's software security, which is more of like code auditing. Yeah. Um, I mean, all the way through policy, all the way through even just doing like vulnerability management. And, and there's a panel later too on like uh, security jobs that don't necessarily aren't technical. I mean, because like we need those, your company needs those same people that can speak to people who are not technical, right? So it just, you know, security is a really broad area. And it's like, okay, you're a doctor, awesome, what kind? And so, I mean, I, I think just coming to places like this and talking to people and meeting them, like figuring out like what is it you actually do? Um, and, you know, the consultant life isn't for everybody. You know, some people are really great at it. I'm not a policy person. There's no way I would ever be, I'm not working internally somewhere. That's just, I'm not cut off for that. Uh, but there are some people that really like that type of environment. And so, I mean, I think that it's, you know, important for people to get out there and explore and see what they're, you know, interested in and comfortable with. Over the wire, yeah, yeah. Over the wire. I think it's .org. Um, I'm not sure, but so that's definitely there are. So for example, there are just if you go to like CTF time or it might be CTF dash time, um, if they wanted like explore some there, like those are that all might, open yeah, source. That might be a, a little. If somebody's learning that might be a little much. Um, like for there's a you know some uh, basic plural site courses on you know it's like the OWASP top ten. Uh, I, the OWASP stuff is, is great. I mean, there, there are some projects that are awesome. There are some projects that are kind of, you know, all right. But they will branch out to a lot. Um, all of them are going to require some technical knowledge. You know, there's some, you know, uh, guides and tutorials on doing the stuff there. Um, there's a lot of people writing a lot of blog articles, too. So you can generally find stuff. But the, the trick is then to take that basic information and really kind of extrapolate from that and, like, understand what's going on. So then you can apply it somewhere else. Because yeah, honestly, like most of those OWASP examples, like in SQL injection or whatever, like, I mean, you're not really going to find stuff that's exploitable like that anymore. Um, but knowing how it's exploitable, like why that's working is important because that's even come to help like my, the MongoDB stuff I was working on. You know, it was a completely different platform, but the knowledge and the, the understanding of like, this is how something is exploitable and how I would exploit it works. 
So that also the development background, like you know, being knowing like how to write code and develop that stuff, like directly made that possible as well. Um, so I would just yeah start there and, and keep going. Um, there's there are some you know books on. The, the, there's like the Web Application Hackers Handbook. Um, it's a few years old now, but I mean it's still one of the only really good ones out there um, on application security specific stuff. Um, but um, I mean I guess we could talk more. Maybe come up with some more resources. Uh, but the Cyberry stuff, uh, Plural Site. Um, I'm not sure what else. Sans. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, all the web app stuff, yep. Yeah. So yeah, the, the Sans Institute is amazing for as a resource to guide you to other resources. Yep. Um, I've heard, like, well, I've never taken any Sans classes. They're, they're pretty pricey. But if you have you know, the ability to do them, I've heard really great things about a lot of them. So. Um, so I think with that, we're actually just about running out of time here. We probably have time for Casey to wrap up. Um, Casey and I are both going to be around today. I'm, I'm one of the organizers, so I, I will be around. Look for me. Casey will be around. Um, so please come up to us, ask more questions. We're happy to you know, provide feedback as well in person um, or Twitter. So I know that we're both pretty yeah, active um, there as well. Um, so. Yeah. Anyway, so in, in closing, you know, to consider, um, I, I, I think mentorship is very valuable to our community. And it's the only way we're going to grow the, the people we need. As a consultant, you know, hiring AppSec people, it's like, all right, we need people who are doing application security or want to or do network security. And a lot of the time, you're not going to get somebody who's experienced coming in. They're going to be you know, very new or uh, potentially you know, first thing they're really doing. So um, I, I think this is super valuable to our community. We need to do more of it. It's the only way we're going to handle fixing that um, knowledge gap and that unemployment gap. But it is also work. You know, it takes time, it takes energy, and it's also fun. And so I highly encourage anyone you know, who's interested to, to try and you know, figure out like, what you can offer other people and see if you can do that. You never know what might come of it. And with that, I uh, just want to say, oops, yeah, just want to say thanks for, thanks for coming. I um, really appreciate it. Um, and you know, like you said, we'll be around. So feel free to hit us up, ask questions. Uh, we'll be at, all around all day today and at the networking event later. Um, so I'd like to see you all there. Thank you. That, Casey Dunham.